One of the things Matt and I have done, um, some of our projects are a little bit unfinished, in, in my opinion, and the Ath Elder House is one of those. So we're, we're trying to really take an inventory of what we have and where we need a little TLC and we need to finish some things up. So. I said it's, next year, so just don't rush over I'll give you a little bit of thank you there. All right, we have some budget um, uh, appropriations, certifications rather, is the first one. So, go ahead, Michelle. Moving on. Okay, you have a four year resolution 2115. It is for a revenue certification. Uh, we received the first half real estate um, back in March. We received 54% of what we expected for the budget, uh, just over $2.6 million. I would now like to make a resolution um, to certify that revenue uh, in our SO5 general fund, um, 6017 account. Uh, we'll follow that up with the cash transfer, which will be the next resolution. This will certify this. Uh, it's basically, once we do that, we're going to certify $500,000 of that. Uh, once we do that, we'll, it'll be to transfer it over to our land improvement fund. We're certifying it in the transfers out account. I move for the adoption of, of the resolution as articulated by Michelle. Can I second that? Mr. Gertz? Yes. Mrs. Shumway? Yes. Mr. Warndorf? Yes. Those are two resolutions, correct? That's 2115 and 2215. Right. Well, we're just going for 2115. That's correct, correct? Yes. Now you'll go for 2215. Yeah. 2215 is the next one. It's a cash for cash transfer. This is going to be to move the money from the uh, account that you just certified. We're going to be doing a cash transfer from that account, and we're going to be moving it over to the land improvement fund. That way it can be used for future need. Um, it will be basically this puts the cash in that account available for future use. I move for the adoption of resolution 22-15 as articulated by Mr. Mellon. Mr. Gertz? Yes. Mrs. Shumway? Yes. Mr. Warner? Yes, thank you. Moving on to some surplus property. Most of it is scrap. $100 starting bid for an old John Deere grain drill. Does it still work? <laughs> All the other part works. Does it still work? And there was something in here about somebody who wanted the uh, barn site. That's on the next page, yes? Yes, that's correct. Old barn site. Correct. Yeah. Will they remove it? They will. They will. And we, we had a quote to remove those, those buildings, so it would come at a cost to us. So there's no harm in clearing the scrap and letting someone remove it for us. It was, I'm not recalling now, it was one of our historical societies. They were going to use it for a Maple Museum? Yes. yes. I move approval of the dis of the disposal of the surplus items identified in the memo of June 1. And a second? Mr. Hertz? Yes. Mr. Shumway? Yes. And Mr. Warren? Yes, thank you. Appreciate that. Moving on to where are we at? Commissioner Shumway? Yes. Time. yes. Yeah, but he didn't have anything. I only have one uh, item, and I'm sorry I haven't had a chance to discuss this with you, John. But uh, I recently had the uh, opportunity to see uh, one of our uh, efforts to raise a, a uh, animal that's uh, unique to one of our districts, and I learned that uh, despite the fact that we have a variety of funding for a variety of purposes due to the generosity of our uh, taxpayers, that there are still uh, items of equipment for certain construction projects which we don't have enough money for. And so I'm just wondering, what you would think about the possibility of having something on our newsletter or on our website or some other place where, <coughs> where uh, citizens or classrooms could uh, 
to could donate uh, funds for specific purposes. So let's just say Paul wanted to get a monitor, or you know, some other person on the staff wanted to get some specialized equipment, or they wanted to uh, make a channel for uh, wildlife so that it would be crushed on the road. Uh, so the people can learn about this special need that we have, and almost like use this like a crowdfunding thing, where where um, individuals or groups could then say, "Sure, I'll donate ten dollars to the purchase of this uh, this device, or the the, the erection of this uh, pipe under the road, so that the uh, the snakes and the salamanders during their annual stampede could go through like, these pipes rather than be crushed on." Do you think there's a place for that? Well, there, there are a number of things in place already. You can go right to the Java Park District home site or website. Yes. You can find a link to donate no, no to Java Park District. So that's, well, I'm that's one of those. You know, like having the a foundation. Just, what I'm saying, though, is oh, like okay. a, a non-foundation thing oh. where, where we can make our constituents aware of these sort of specialized projects um, so that if they were so inclined, that they could hear from the professional on our staff and what they're trying to accomplish, and then to, to mail in their donation for, for the saving of the special uh, sound managers, for example. Sure, sure. One of the things we're, we're working on right now is to uh, assemble some cases of support that will go to the foundation, but it, it could also be done through the, through the park district, sure. Paul, you can well, you let me know what, what you're thinking about. We can get it out there. So. <coughs> I have one thing. I noticed in, in the report that you talked about uh, weed management of one of your lakes down uh, there. I think you use Amors on that. Oh, um, a Amors grass carpet. I think yeah, grass, grass carpet. I don't know that we do have any of their time. Do we? <laughs> say, I've had them for 15 years and they're well worth it. You know, there are no chemicals in your lake, there's nothing. And they all, they can tell you, I know we love the fish. We had them all like that situation. And the white aimer, as they're called, is, it's a native of Russia, but they clean up your pond, there's no chemical in it, and it's crystal clear. There's a lot of weed. They're not always beautiful because there's a lot of grassy algae. Oh, yeah. Did they have when I first started mine, you could always walk across the, 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 the weeds. Two years' time, it was clean. And I put in the first just four. I have about an acre, acre lake. Right now, I think I've got about five, and I put in three two years ago. Because as they get older, they get to be 41 inches long and 35 pounds. And if you want to scare some friends, <coughs> just send them down and understand all oh, of them. And this whale comes up at them. And says, Where did that come from? And you can't catch them unless you put lettuce on them. But no, that's well worth it. And they're not that expensive. I'm sorry, what was it? Amor. A-M-U-R. White Amor. I don't recommend checking with the national. And you can buy that's right, what you can buy right that, that's, what he, that's what he's that's suggesting. What he that maybe that would be appropriate for consideration. Okay, well, then I'm going to ask you to check it. Paul's not ready to comment yet. No, he's got to do some research, okay? And we're ready Paul, to go. Is this a good thing? Yeah. Um, so I have a lot of experience with these white There's grass carpet. Well, it's the other name, most people. And they're sold a lot. And they, they, do, they do a good job. You are correct. Um, they're not a native for fish, like you said. So there's concerns about that, and for the most part, they're supposed to be, they have to be um, sterile. That's a regulation. And you can't sell them anywhere else. Yeah. 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 So that concern has kind of gone away too over the years. But um, so I used to work for a fish farm that sold many, many of these things. And four to five, six of these per acre. Um, it depends on the weed problems, they, they are. Um, Somewhat picky at times about what kind of weeds they like. Um, they don't do a good job on surface weed, like junk weed, water weed, old things like that, um, cattails. But they do a pretty decent job on the submerging vegetation. 
So um, they have the place we talked about over the years here, but we used to have, and we do, we used to have some in ponds, and, and uh, they last 20, 30 years at the most. And they, uh, well, the chemicals that you put in aren't really beneficial to some of the whale. No, I don't know. I mean, unfortunately, it's putting a mandate on, on some of the bigger problems, really, are looking at the watershed and what is causing some of these problems and the aquatic system, really. It's the nutrient enrichment and things like that. That's the way to eventually solve the problems. So, I mean, they have their place. You know, so, there's guys like the blue and the co-enemy section. Freddie, 